everybody called the meeting to order. Um, well, we'll start with um, any inter introductions. So, new certifications since the last meeting? Anyone? Um, how about um, students? Any students in the room? Just to <laughs> 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 say Ryan, um, she isn't here, but Angela Morris has her same piece. Oh, good. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Um, how about new members or new to the, this is your first day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Before you take that cookie. I'm Sierra. Um, I'm from North Carolina. I'm um, oh. the I came from Wake Forest Baptist Health Sprinter's Children, both level one trauma. Um, and I got transferred up here with my significant other who is in the military. So, well, that's well, 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 And you are at? I'm at Peyton Manning. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so Michael brought up the, Stacy did up the meeting. So if you remember, Sarah Hines moved, right? She moved to the beautiful Alaska and left us all behind here. Um, so Stacy might have agreed to step into the role of secretary. The board of directors decided that um, we felt that that role should be filled and we should continue on, and Stacy graciously volunteered. And then she's not here. She volunteered. No. <laughs> well, it may be a little bit. She actually she did volunteer. Was there right? might have been out there. Yes. There was. I wouldn't have been So did you pass those out? There are right there. Hey Tim, you want to grab those minutes that are up there from the June meeting? We'll pass those around. Do you take a quick glance at them and then we'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the June meeting? So chapter 131. <laughs> um, Get up there, girl. July 19th, we had our ECIO meeting. Had a great turnout. We have Maple Therm coming September 20th. 
Okay. EMPC class, December 5th and 6th. Spots are still available if anybody wants them. And we're also having a TNCC course November 1st and 5th with spots open as well. I think that's it. Chapter 133. Uh, short and sweet, uh, Snapchat 133, Brian Rath, uh, president-elect for this year. Uh, our chapter was unable to meet on August 2nd at Chinook as pre -planned. Uh We are planning to meet in October. We are currently seeking speakers. We're really kind of open to anything, so if you guys have anybody that you've had from you that was really good, Please send that our way. Um, if you wanted to shoot me a link on our Facebook page, on the school page is fine too. Uh, in touch. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Did you establish a plan? Chapter 134. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a long moment. I have those. Um, chapter 134 met in July, and we had about 44 people in attendance, which is not our maximum, but still a good turnout. Um, we are hosting a TCRN review course tomorrow and Saturday. Woohoo! <laughs> um, then bring your work shoes, too. So. Ah. <laughs> we're going to have to move some tables around. So, uh -oh. you know, ED, ED nurses have learned to adapt, so we're going to have to make you, like, do a little bit of physical labor, too, this weekend. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm excited. We had 51 people registered. Um, we actually have some, someone coming from Alaska. Oh, and I don't know if she's from here or if this just worked out with her schedule, but she is flying in from, from Alaska for this course on the side. We've got a couple others from out of state, you know, but just like Cincinnati area and Chicago area, but uh, not to discount those at all. Um, so hopefully that'll work out uh, well. It's going to be tomorrow and Saturday at Eskenazi. Um, anything else going on in the state I don't know about, or in the city I don't know about? Um, that's, that's all. <laughs> We've got a few delegates from our chapter going to national next month. Yes. Yay. All right, chapter 237. <laughs> chapter 246. Samantha Fisher, president for chapter 246 of the Northern North Central Northwest Indiana, soon to be hopefully divided up with our friends over on the west side of the state so we can better cover the northern part of the state. Uh, so we didn't make it to the symposium just due to things going on um, within our chapter, but we will say in June we met at Soho. We talked about Eloquist. We had just under 40 members at our meeting in June, which is huge for us. So we had a lot of people from cardiovascular within the hospital and ENA members involved all together. We just had a meeting. We took July off. We needed a break, so we took July off. And in August, we had 16 people, much less, but Stacey Bobek came, who was at the state symposium, and she talked about cradle to the grave trauma assessments. And we met at the Casey's. Our vendor was someone from the ENA conference, Magnolia. They have the blood culture ones. If you were there last year, it was the really cool blood, culture, blood culturing system where it pulls off to the side, it gives you your five mLs, and you get your clean cultures. So we're also looking at those. And then we have a meeting scheduled August 20th. Oh, baby. We'll be delivering babies in our sim lab. And Indiana Donor Network is sponsoring us. And we have about 20 people already signed up for that. That's kind of cool. Nice. Still on fire up there. Awesome. All right. Uh, chapter 365. Chapter 401. Joseph May is our president, and he works in general penitentiary. He's a game of fireball. We are going to get him here one of these days soon. Emily Cannon, who is a doctor of nursing practice at Indiana State University, so pulls in the scholarly people. Marianne Fagg, which shows you can just keep on going forever. She's a treasurer. <laughs> and uh, I'm one of the standby who gets during the meeting, so I'll report for you. We have two TNCC classes coming up in September, November, and Jack Bates, sorry. 
um, and four reported the coming to the record point that I just learned about yesterday, or two days ago. Four to be sent from regional hospital to the instructor course. So, it's Cheryl. It's Cheryl. It's Tracy it's Ballard. Have you heard about it? <laughs> okay. well, well, nope, but I'll, I'll look forward. I'll look forward. Thanks. Chapter 448. <laughs> Tina Curtis, Chapter 448, program chair. Um, we had our first TNCC class um, in June. It was well received. 23 participants. Um, November is the next TNCC class, and that is full. Um, the chapter is sending the president-elect to nationals, and our next meeting is going to be uh, August 30th at 6 p.m. in Chapter 474. Hi, I'm Penny. Um, we have a TNCC class coming up in November, and um, we met at a really small meeting last month. We were kind of struggling a little bit, so we sent on a survey monthly to our members to see, you know, what, if they want to change up the date or the time or, you know, just kind of our process so we can kind of re-engage some people. So that's why we've got one. Is your EMPC class on the website? I I don't know. I'll check. Oh, please put it on. Okay, I will. Because he says no. I don't no. think it is. I don't but it might I'll be the it. last one in that's available okay. in Indiana this year. Okay, I will so I mean, you might pull from okay. around. Sure. Uh huh. We have we have two okay. coming up in northern Indiana. There's too. four yeah. left in the state. There's four left in the state. Okay. Two of those are closed. Yeah, ours in December and October is closed, and our, I think Bloomington, we have CC is closed. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. I thought there's two open on the website. Okay. So I'll if you if you okay. have one, just send it to, or go to the website, and then the third thing down says have website updates. Yeah. Put that in there. Yeah, I would ask everybody to do that. I've got some emails in the last couple weeks actually just asking already about 2019 classes. So just as you, you can do your classes or, or get your classes scheduled, you can just go ahead and do that link that Matt just mentioned on the website so we can get it posted on there for everyone to see. All right, Michael, have we established this one? Yes, so <laughs> All right, so moving on. Um, President's report. So I'm pretty excited about this, and Ben's here. So um, Andrew and I had the opportunity to go up back, was that June? Yeah, June. June 27. Yeah, June. Um, and they've got, the, so this is the chapter, the, the new committee that's coming up to hopefully form a, an official chapter that this is kind of related to as well as they're going to split that northern section up there. Um, they had a great turnout. Andrew did a nice job kind of explaining membership benefits. Um, it was a nice time, that nice presentation. I wasn't able to go to the last one, so I told him I was going to call him out today and let him kind of speak. So Ben, if you come up here and kind of give some details of your new committee that's going on. So my, name's nice ben, job. Yeah, my name is Ben Froge. Um, I work by you. Um, but uh, it's really exciting what we have going on in Lafayette right now. We had 25 uh, members uh, that showed up to the July meeting, which was July 31st. Uh, we had three hospitals that were represented. We had um, Saney, IU, and we also had a uh, member from White County Memorial. Uh, so, yeah, we're actually getting into the critical access hospital as well. Um, so, Ron came up and did a speech on the benefits of ENA and also uh, kind of the whole national perspective. Uh, it's a 30 minute speech, but the enthusiasm in the room is great. Um, very excited about what's going on. Um, we have a lot of buy in between both of the big hospitals in Lafayette. Um, so, yeah, and um, I made a mission this month to kind of get out to the critical access hospitals and kind of reach out to them and get them involved as well. So, um, next <laughs> month, we are having nominations to kind of set up a formalized leadership structure to transition into actually being a chapter um, that's recognized by the council here. So, that's kind of what we have going on, and uh, we're really excited up there. So, awesome. 
So I would ask that, so you know, I was able to go and I'm going to try and go to their future meetings as well. That maybe we can post that, Matt, is that possible to post there? Some of the information on the website? Yep. In, on the same spot in the web, website updates? Just, um, you know, it's obviously just like this. It's open to anyone just if you guys can show your support and just show how excited that as a state we are. Um, maybe go up and support those guys. And, and kudos to you, Ben, for really driving this. It's been awesome. Yeah. Ben, when is your next meeting? August 30th. Okay. Um, that's tentatively set. I'm working on kind of getting a sponsor set up um, right now, but um, if it's not going to be August 30th, I'm definitely going to make it the first week of September. <laughs> um, next, national election. So if you haven't seen on the website, if you go to the national website, there's the Meet the Candidates that are on there, and our very own Ron is running for Secretary Treasurer this year. <coughs> so we yeah. continue to support him and boost, the, boost him on up. Um, so elections will be um, September 7th. It'll run through the 28th of September. Um, it'll close during the national um, conference. So make sure that you are encouraging your members, your employees, anybody that's CNA members, your chapter folks, make sure that we're voting. I know historically we're about, you know, we usually hover around the 10, 10% yeah. or so, which is super low. I mean, we are a state that does a lot more than that. We can show surely more than 10%. Yeah. So um, it, it's enough time to, everybody should have a chance to vote, like the 7th to the 20th. So make sure everybody's voting. I heard Dr. Brown yesterday, he said Indiana obviously needs a bigger turnout than what they've had. But he also said if, you, if you're talking to your other members or you are reaching out to people that are not a part of this and they want to know more, Obviously, they can go to the website and pull up information. And he said probably by the end of this, later in this month, there's going to be a Facebook page with a link that he'll make sure gets sent out mm -hmm. so that people can, can know what's going on and, and be informed before they vote. But with this being the last meeting, we want to make sure we got the word out there. Perfect. So, so we need to ask our North Carolina colleague over here to email for North Carolina. <laughs> we need help from other states for this. We, Ron is our very first yeah. person on the board from Indiana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I will try, but I think Charlene um, oh. will support. Yeah. <laughs> is, oh. is oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, I, I can say but, but I don't think she's running. I don't think she's running. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. Is she actually running secretary treasurer? I don't know. I know she's no. no. director. I think mean, she's ordered running for the. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, so she's okay. going to be in different positions. Okay. So we can talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it should be okay. Yeah. We'll go to Charlene and be very grateful. Absolutely. We'll vote for Charlene. We can make it deal. We can make it deal. nominations are open currently um, on the our website for the state elections um, there has been some interest already sparked so if you are willing to if you want to nominate someone um, go to the website um, Matt you want to talk to that there's a link on there yeah it's the I want to say maybe the second thing that comes up second or third something like that but all you do is just click on that uh, it will actually make the you can make you can nominate someone. Um, as soon as you nominate someone, it automatically sends them an email address that says, "Hey, somebody nominated you. Do you want this? Yes or no?" And then it gives them the ability to put all their information in. How cool um, is that? So yeah, it makes, it, it, makes it, a little, it makes it a little bit easier. Because what we had been doing in the past is somebody would say, "Yeah, somebody would be great to do it," and then we have no clue who somebody is to be able to get in touch with them yeah. um so this way it just makes it a little bit easier the forms are all online just hopefully makes it a lot easier for people to be able to do that That's cool. the only thing that the only thing i do just caution you on is the fact that once you put somebody's name in and you nominate them it will send them the email that said hey somebody nominated you <laughs> just put that out there and if you're interested <coughs> ask some of us who've done some of the positions before yeah and self nominations are okay as well that. that's on there that's on the site as well and if you don't feel comfortable with that, talk to someone. Yeah. Well, obviously, we're all looking for people to, to continue on, so we'll, we'll easily nominate you. That's not a problem, mm -hmm. right? Sure. No, I'm good at <laughs> I'm very good at nominating you presidents. Good at okay. So am I. 
<laughs> Are we still taking the terms at one year? I know we had talked about extending that at one point. No. No. <clears throat> so. Go ahead. All right. So the, um, the president elect, it's technically a three year term. Okay. You've got your elect, you've got president, you've got to be passed, okay. right? Secretary is a two year, and we um, are secretary elect this time. Um, and then treasurer elect, they're trying to make that the uh, a three year as well. So it'll be the elect and then your two year term. Okay. So one year to, to learn with our current treasurer and then two years. That's great. Where am I supposed to stop? You have a problem. Pay no attention. All right. So the state fundraising challenge. I'm super excited. So kudos to all of you, everybody individually who donated, the chapter leaders who encouraged, and, and as chapters you donated, um, as a state. So if you remember, our goal was $5,000. Typically what we do at the state is we, in the past years past, have been about, spread at about $2,000 is what we donate um, each year to the foundation. When we went to SCLO back in January, um, I reached over to Penny, and I'm like, I really want to do this, like this $5,000 pledge. She's like, do it. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So I got a little nervous because I'm like, that's a lot of money, you know, but we, Andrew pointed out, it's only like, dollars a member of what we have in Indiana. So I called national and our final count was six thousand nine hundred <laughs> stuff on Amazon. There's a thing called Amazon Smile mm -hmm. yeah. and donations can be given to a charity of your choice. So I signed us up for that. So if you get the opportunity and you're purchasing on Amazon and they ask you where you want the money to go, you can choose ENA. Kroger yeah. does something similar. It's when you put in your Kroger number, even if it's an alternate number. Oh, yes. Because a lot of people can choose their school. Their school. So is it Indiana ENA or is it Indiana? I think Indiana. I think I registered it the same that it is on our bank account, which it's ridiculous. It's like the Indiana State Council of the Emergency Nurses Association. Just start searching for something along those lines, and hopefully, no one else was dumb enough to put something that long. It'll be on there. Um, delegates. Any delegates in the room? Everybody understand what you need to do when you come back if you want money from me? Oh, so $900, I believe, per delegate. Um, there is an expense form on the website underneath the form section. Please find it. If you don't give it to me, I'm going to ask you to fill it out. It kind of walks you through what you need to give me and how to add all that up. And then I'll give you a check um, for the $900 if that's what you spent. 
if you didn't spend nine hundred dollars, but your friend spent eleven hundred, it would behoove you maybe to get together. Don't tell your president and figure out how to share some of those funds. Um, but I think that's all you need to give me when you come back. Okay. Any other questions so far? I continue to still get a lot of those spam mails that want me to donate money places. Usually it's from Ryan, but I know they're not really from him because they're way too nicely worded towards me. <laughs> I delete them until I text him and I say, do you really want me to send money here? No. <laughs> so just watch out for those. If your treasurer somehow is somehow sending you weird emails or something like that. Yeah, and I think it's happening throughout the state. Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten some weird emails from Ryan as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm not sending you. You'll know I'm not That's happening you. with our treasurer as well. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So just be, be careful. Just obviously be very cautious. If, if it's a suspicious email, um, you know, reach out to that person and see if it's truly what they're asking for. Most of the time you can kind of pick up on it. Like, I'm not going to randomly send out an email asking for money. I mean, that would be nice. You, <laughs> you were asking me to buy you um, uh, Apple or iCards. What are those? The iTunes cards. Oh, no, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> well, then just call me and I'll buy them for you. Just don't send an email. You always sound very desperate. No. He's like, it needs to be done by the end of the day. I have to be. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, moving on to uh, new business. Um, so we announced the delegates. There's a few of us that are here in the room. We're doing delegate orientation afterwards. Um, mainly the orientation really for me, to me, is, is for ones that haven't been. But we will talk about the resolutions and things that will come up in General Assembly. So if you're in the room and you're going as a delegate, please raise your hand. Good number nice. here. So um, as these resolutions are up, and I don't know if we can do a link to where we can post it to or have it on our page. <coughs> okay, they are on there now. The link, the link information is on there, but it takes okay. it, the link information. I can't just post them on there because it's actually behind the username, password, and only okay. delegates have access to those. Okay. For now, I don't know why this this is a change apparently from what they've done uh -huh. in the past. Okay. Well, as you come across those, we um, and I'll go over with the delegates. India was gracious enough. Um, she's at the state board of nursing meeting today, um, but she went through and kind of did a synopsis of each resolution and everything that's going to come up at General Assembly, so the delegates will talk about that afterwards. Um, but as members, if you have anything or any comments, please seek out one of those delegates because we are representing uh, all of you as a whole. Mm -hmm. So um, our chapters, whatever, funnel it through somebody to get it to one of the delegates. So um, let's see, fall retreat. So. October 12th and 13th, which we have already posted on Facebook, will be the fall retreat. We're going to have it at Explore Brown County, um, which is, uh, has anybody been there? Maybe folks. So I'm still working out the details with the venue. Um, we're trying to get, um, trying to, we're getting into that period now where Matt and I are going to have to work together to do a registration online so I can get a sense of how many people can commit. Um, I, I do believe that we'll still have it around the same price that we've had in years past, about 30 bucks for the night. To, if you want to spend the night or if you want to come to the retreat. Um, that will include, as of now, it looks like two activities, so we're trying to narrow down which two activities, as well as overnight accommodations and the use of the hall on the 12th, their big, like, dining hall. We'll have a sponsor for dinner that night. We'll do a short AstraZeneca. We'll be the sponsor that night for dinner. They're going to cater in a dinner. Um, and where's we'll, the dining Explore Brown County. Somebody will look up the address real quick. I meant to write that down. It's a national survey. It's just outside of Nashville, Indiana. But it's a, it's a big, it's a pretty big complex. They have paintball, they have archery, they have um, hiking, they do um, ATV tours, things like that. Um, zip lining. So as of right now, we, he's the, the gentleman's got it narrowed down to a few different activities for us to try and figure out and choose from. We're just waiting to see. The more people we have, um, the more options I think that they will give us. So we're just kind of waiting to see. So Matt and I actually had a discussion this week, and hopefully soon we'll get something up on the website now that we've solidified dates. 
Um, we'll get something up there. This, we are not, if you remember, we're not doing the instructor course this time with it. Um, so they're going to have the instructor course. We'll talk about that here in a second. We'll be separate. So this is a time that we want you to just, it's for all of us to get together and just kind of have fun. We will do a short state meeting the night of the 12th. So on the website, it currently mentioned that we had a state meeting on, on October 11th um, here. That will actually be during the fall retreat. All down there. So. Does anybody need yeah, to It's 2620 Valley Branch Road, in Nashville, Indiana. Okay. So yeah, it's just outside of Nashville. Um, looks like a decent place. Um, accommodations, looking at the pictures about what we've had in the past, maybe a little bit better, but it looks like a fun place. So they've been very easy to work with. They actually um, are so excited to get us down there that they discounted a lot of things for us. And I don't know if they typically do that, but they know that we're a nonprofit group um, and that we're emergency nurses. And that has really piqued their interest to get us down there. Um, so they are, uh, they slashed the, the dining hall um, over half. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Is there any restrictions? <laughs> Two things, uh, advanced practice, uh, is the one committee I chair up, 
one thing for that this session is as of July 1st, nurse practitioners and PAs can now sign your post forms or your post, whichever terminology you're using. So oh. your primary okay. providers and MP, they can sign your you know, family members uh, mm -hmm. end of life kind of declaration and what they would want for kids to do or anybody to do if they have a, a dying event. So now every nurse practitioner can do that. EMS, a lot of stuff in EMS at our last commission meeting last month. We have a new medical director, Michael Kaufman from St. Vincent's, who heads up dozens of EMS agencies. That's a medical director. He's now the state EMS medical director, and a lot of things are going to be happening with him in that position. Uh, we had our first, in the year and a half, I've been doing EMS commission representation. This was our first four hour meeting. It was in like two, two and a half. This went on forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Dr. Coffin had so many things to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, stroke centers. Uh, there is now a stroke protocol for all Indian EMS trying to get the stroke patients to the proper destination. All verified stroke centers are now at the Indian State Department of Health website. And when I last looked last night about midnight, there are currently 40 primary stroke centers, three stroke ready centers, and then three comprehensive stroke centers, those being IU Methodist, Lutheran Fort Wayne, and Parkview Fort Wayne, with up and comers being Michelle Eskenazi and probably St. Vincent's. St. Vincent's had their site visit just a couple weeks ago. Okay. Oh, so ours is not even scheduled yet. Up and coming to have yeah. more comprehensive stroke centers. Yeah. The difference being the ability to do uh, invasive therapy mm -hmm. uh, using clock extraction. Uh, EMSC, EMS for Children, 82% of Indiana Hospital ERs responded to their survey of pediatric preparedness as far as training, education, and equipment. Uh, they're planning a pediatric education coordinator class so that your staff can attend that to help them better education for ER and EMS staff. Uh, there was a community member from Southern Indiana who was interested in a bridge program for an advanced practice provider to become a paramedic if so desired. Uh, currently, the Indiana Administrative Code does allow for a nurse who is either an ER nurse or a flight nurse who is also an EMT basic to challenge a paramedic training program. So we've extended that with language adopting nurse practitioners and PAs. So as soon as we get the go ahead to change the code, which should be soon, we're going to. database regarding their patient contact and runs. There's approximately 30% non-compliance amongst our EMS providers throughout the state of approximately 338 EMS agencies. Starting October 1st, they're going to get fined 500 bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> So incentive, we get that data, we need the data yeah. for our program. It's actually huge. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's huge because I know for the as many years that I've been in the US, they just they just ask. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, nothing's going to happen to us. So. Well, that's what's going to happen. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Probably the biggest thing that came out of the meeting that's most of the time on is Dr. Kaufman and his crew put together a State of Indiana EMS Quality Initiative Plan. This looks at approximately 14 quality measures that came out of what was originally called EMS Compass a couple of years ago. EMS Compass has now been abolished, and now there's what's called NIMSLA, National EMS. Unfortunately, in Indiana, we don't do so good for our EMS. So, for especially in my patients, getting aspirin to take basic treatment, fifty two percent of the time we're going to for our EMS. Treating documented hypoglycemia, go up on scene, your blood sugar is low, and you're having changes in alimentation. 15% of patients weren't being treated at all. Uh, let's see, from a pediatric standpoint, pediatric <laughs> asthma, only 36% got an alcohol treatment. That's hard to see. Oh my gosh. Yeah, these numbers are people. They do. Medication for status seizure, 
untreated, 52%. Oh Improper documentation, 25%. Probably the simplest thing, a 12 week EKG for cardiac suspicious chest pain. 15% got no EKG at all. Only 36% had an EKG documented within the first 10 minutes of the contact. So I'll do that. Now, Michelle Glenn, you'll love this stroke assessment. <laughs> stroke documentation or stroke score documentation only 63%. Sweet. So we need to do that. And you're just talking Cincinnati Pre Hospital stroke assessment. Any stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. like the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see, respiratory assessment for pediatric respiratory distress. 70% of those kids had a respiratory rate and pulse ox measure. Blood glucose measurement in status seizures, only 54%. And vital sign reporting, which just was pulse, respiratory rate, and systolic blood pressure, three numbers. Two sets of those, only 46%. So there's lots of room for improvement, and that's what Dr. Kaufman told me to do. This is a statewide report of error reporting agency. He's hoping to break it down for each provider agency so that you can see exactly how your service is doing in your town in order to be improved. Mm -hmm. Upcoming education for your EMS partners. Uh, the Indiana Emergency Response Conference, September 12th to the 15th at the Sheraton Keystone www.indianaerc.com for registration. I think the early bird has passed. St. Vincent Medical Group is having their annual Olivia Symposium October 5th at the Marriott Indianapolis North. You can get tickets at Eventbrite. Uh, I looked at the like, schedule this year. I'm planning on going. A lot of good arrhythmia stuff this year, like the uh, pre expectation WPW, mm -hmm. my favorite arrhythmia that we talked about this year. Uh, Man, you might be able to help me out with this. The IUR Net Cardiology Conference. You never had it all at Amanda. Just uh, helping that together. Okay, you guys don't talk about it. Sit down on vacation for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Reportedly, October 26, 2018. Details are coming later. Uh, the 25th Annual Eskenazi Trauma Conference, November 2nd. Registration opens later this month. Southeast Indiana's EMS Symposium in Sellersburg, Indiana, November 9th. And then finally, the Indiana EMS Association Annual Conference, November 30th and December 1st at Four Point Sheraton in the West Lafayette. So those are all things that your EMS partners can go for education. Next EMS Commission meeting, Wednesday, September 12th at 3 p.m. during the IRC conference at the Sheraton Center. So, questions on EMS? Well, that's one more thing to do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, for just for the quality reporting, is that all EMS agencies total or just medical agencies? This is all EMS agencies. And this this report's phenomenal. He's only been in that position five months. Six, oh, I was yeah, going to say less months. than six. Yeah. So I mean, he's rocking and rolling. Yep, he's got more than ten people, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's awesome. All right, forensics. Um, so Andrew said, um, let's see, they continue to work with ICJI, IPAC, uh, Indiana State Police to move forward with the new kit, new tracking process. Um, they are in the process of securing a vendor. Members have also mentioned on the new sex crime reimbursement application that will soon be available as well as the NPEP voucher process. Um, Barb has been working with Jane. I guess that's something you want to talk about that? Okay. So Jane from um, University of Southern Indiana. Yeah. Yes. So Jane is um, the AHAC Area Health Education Director down in USI. <laughs> she actually applied for a federal grant called the Hershey Grant. And what is it? It's specifically money for sexual assault nurse examiner um, education. So if uh, she is one of them, they're hoping to give 16 um, applicants um, the money. There's $8 million, so she could potentially get up to $500,000. So the goal is, is obviously to support staying education, um, the clinical training, and then just holding on mini conferences on um, certain topics. So we should know by the 1st of September, and then the money will be available 1 October. And as ENA, I signed, I signed a letter of support for that um, grant and sent it back to her a couple Sundays ago. So, yeah. so it'll go through. So, 
That's all she has on you. Anything else you want to add? That's all she has on you. Other than put um, some registration forms up there, uh, Heidi Health Riley is going to be conducting their second annual pediatric sexual assault nurse examiner training. And that registration is now open. Uh, 50 is the amount that we're going to be taking for that course. And just FYI, um, next week on the 15th, 16th August is Terre Haute AX two day same clinical. We have three spots left. So you can go ahead and still register if you want. Okay. Uh, fundraising grants. I have been contacted by a number of professional fundraising entities over the last couple months. Oh. You'd be amazed how much these people would want. Professional fundraising groups think nothing of asking for a couple of thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to try and guarantee you that they'll raise you money. Mm -hmm. And for the last thirty-five years, we've been doing it for each other, yeah. all volunteer. Um, the, really, the most thing I can report to you right now is that because you love my sister, <laughs> she is now officially the county grant writer for the Million County, Indiana, and she helped to get the highlighted road markers along the sides and the little bumper plants down the middle of the roads and stuff through programs that were available and money that was available, but there wasn't somebody that they thought they could afford to write the grant for them for, for the community. They, government grants so um, she has the skills and the persnickety ability she did it they got the money and they got to thinking well maybe we could just go ahead and hire her as our party <laughs> grant writer so thank you guys for having faith in my sister so now she has faith in herself <laughs> Other, I'll let you read this uh, in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah in the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah. it's 
past. It's and getting the there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's getting there. It's processes. And it really is checks and balances. And we do really want to have everybody watch each other. And, and what did you mean to say this? And is this the way you meant to? Because otherwise things go through and they don't get checked. And there's a lot more tail whip on the other hand. So for the folks that are specialized in that, they need, they say if they hear the voice of six functional working human beings with a positive message, they will act on that message. So if you call the 1-800 to get your representative message and put the message through to them, if they hear from six functional working people, they act on it. Because usually they just hear the rap, 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 rap on the other end of the phone. Just thank you. Appreciate that. All right, injury permission. Yeah, that was, that was, that's a good voice. Hey, I'm Amy Schwartz. Um, so I really love that we had the opioid stuff today because that's a big part of injury prevention. But in July, we, Kathy Anderson was able to organize, uh, she asked for a donation from the Indiana ENA for $2,000 for the Sokoa AGM Hope Solutions. And what they do is they help um, older seniors, or low income seniors, get things like air conditioners. So um, July is heat stroke month, so we organized that, and they were able to get 12 air conditioners and eight fans. And the day of, they were all spoken for. So, and this is a big thing with our elderly. Especially when they're on multiple medications and it's really hot this summer. So that was really an awesome thing that we were able to do. Um, and then they wrote a nice note for us on their website and it's on Facebook as well. And I shared that. So if you guys want to read that, that's pretty awesome. And then in August, uh, we are, it's Heads Up, which is concussion and, and head injury. Looks. And we're trying to get to school athletes about and educating them because that's where it's supposed to be you know, coming from. And there's actually on the CDC, they have a Rocket Blades brain safety game and it's something you can download on your iPhone. You can play it and throughout the whole thing it teaches you about head injuries and whatnot. And, oh, you just did this. So tell your coach, like, oh, my head hurts. Okay. Um, so we're working with Brock. Riley to see if they've already provided some stuff, and then if not, we're going to get to schools and provide some information about that. That's all I got. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Matt, anything with media and memberships, newsletters? No, nope, other than stuff still, still coming out. Okay. It's on the website. All right. Um, pediatrics. Thanks. Hi, I'm Don Fold, and right? I'm the pediatric chair. I just want to let you guys know we've had 19 classes so far this year in Indiana with 195 students that have taken an emergency pediatric course. We have five classes left in the state, um, but two of those classes are closed that I'm aware of, and that includes your class. Um, I just want to let you know, Andrew gave some of my I EMSC Sorry. Monday. No, that's okay. <laughs> we cross over. Uh, Monday, October 22nd. They, uh, it, it's the Indiana Emergency Service Medical Services for Children. Uh, they're having a school nurse class. So it teaches the school nurse. That it's a free course. It teaches the school nurses uh, emergency handling and emergency situations. Uh, the pediatric readiness. Um, Pediatric Facility Readiness Recognition application is not on the internet yet. However, if you go to imsc.org, um, sorry, wrong letters, you can email Margo and Margo will send you the application for your facility. Um, they said that the application should be, they're editing right now, but it should be up soon. But Margo will send you the application if you're interested in that. Um, and then don't forget, if you also go to that website, you can also get the pediatric community mobile education that comes from Riley. They come out to your hospital and do pediatric SIMS. Um, I work for community and I know several of our hospitals have had those simulations and those are very beneficial to all right, student nurse liaison. 
When you get done, sit down and write down what you say. I know. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Polka. I'm your student nurse liaison here. Um, school is getting back in session, so hopefully we will be attending the Student Nurse Association local chapter meeting down in Wilmington and connecting with them. We've done some things with them in the past, um, but they've not been very active this past year. Um, and then we will be planning things for next spring, including our um, NCLEX Bowl and our day in the life event that we've done. And of course, if you guys have any questions or want to do something similar, we'd be happy to share ideas with you. Reach out. Thanks. Drama. <laughs> All right, so I have a lot of information, much anticipated information regarding the new um, editions of our TNCC and ENPC courses. Um, I sat in or listened in on the webinar last week. So for ENPC, um, the rollout for the new fifth edition is going to be in October of this year, 2018. And the new edition is going to be available, I'm sorry, the old fourth edition classes um, will be available at the end of January 2019. So there's going to be a few months crossover where if you have a class already on the book scheduled, you can use the old fourth edition or the new fifth edition. Like I said, rollout is going to be October of this year for the new one. Um, some information on it. It is being described as a flipped classroom module model with more online and interactive learning, I think, as we all anticipated. Um, there is going to be approximately four to six hours of pre-preparation online um, prior to coming to the course. Uh, it is going to be a day and a half, so after they do all their pre-prep online, um, day one of the course is going to be your skill stations, discussion, breakout, they said there's very few slides, very few um, lectures um, for day one. Day two is going to be obviously your ill and injured children testing station, very similar to what we do right now. Uh, the test is going to be given online. So after they complete the course, um, come in for their first day, they're going to have to hand in a completion form for all of the online education. The directors are also going to have access to look and see, you know, prior to the course, how many people have actually logged in and completed all of their learning prior to. Once the course um, ill injured <laughs> is completed, the director will assign the test and it can be taken, it's open the format, it can be taken anywhere at home. So it's all honor system is hopefully the person that took the course or the person taking the test for the certification. Card is going to be electronic. <sighs> Um, retesting and remediation, they're still in the process of determining. They're going to be doing three courses over this next month, test courses to work out some bugs. The instructors currently for ENPC are going to have a toolkit that is going to be pushed out. They don't know the dates. Um, they're going to have updates hopefully the next month when that toolkit is coming out to everybody. Um, and the cost is still to be determined for ENPC. Um, but they are still trying to keep it within chapters, within the state, so that our chapters and our state are um, able to make some money from those. So, written tests online tied. Um, I think I mean, if you have open books, to be determined. Out. To oh. be determined. So, there's going to be a certain time frame that the uh, pre course modules they will have, and that's right. to be determined as well whether it's you know a month yeah, prior to the course or two weeks. But the test is also. I was just thinking it once they take from the what test. I understand once they start it they have to finish it within a certain amount of time it's not start and then come back but well, it's open that's book. what I was kind of that's what they said but they could didn't give the time sit there and look up every answer and it might take them 12 hours to finish the test and yeah which I'm sure they still learned but still you wonder about that so you'd rather somebody take an hour, an hour and a half, or whatever. And it makes it sound like the online portion. So they're going to have 10 online modules, simulation avatars, as well as case study designs where they have to fill in answers and whatnot to get through all of that pre course content. Um, Crazy. Yes. As in previous transitions from one edition to the next, the instructors have to do some online training. Yes. They're going to send out an instructor toolkit with all the updates and the online learning um, soon. They did have a date, but it was going to be coming soon, and that does now. So TNCC, oh, sorry, the uh, um, 
there's my train of thought, where was it on here? I had it written down. So the manual is a complete rewrite for EMPC. It's a new publisher, it's a complete rewrite. There is going to be 36 chapters with new content, such as um, school violence and sex trafficking, but it's a complete rewrite. TNCC, they are still working on the changes, but they are projecting in the first quarter of 2019 is when the new TNCC rollout is going to come, more information coming on that. It's going to be similar to ENPC with lots of online interactive pre-work prior to. Manual is a revision, it is not a complete rewrite. Um, and then they had information. So those of us going to conference, they have two specific dates where we can go and meet and greet and see some of these interactive modules and talk to the Towers and B about the new stuff rolling out. So EMPC will be September 27th, 2.30 to 4.30 in room 329 at conference. For the new TNCC, September 28th, 2.30 to 4.30, room 329. And I'll send out info when they send out more info to us. So I think that's a big surprise because I think we all knew we were going to have online modules. Um, and also, I think a lot of us have seen in our comments that our participants think they need a third day <laughs> because they're being thrown so much information. So I, I think this is a good change. I think as far as getting online, letting people work in their own homes and then coming in and we're solidifying the actual assessment piece of it, which is as we know is the part the hardest for folks so thanks for doing that Tracy. um just wanted to remind everybody the instructor course as ryan mentioned earlier we took it away from the retreat um so that folks could really have a retreat <laughs> and so and also tracy and i were trying to be in rebels uh, we're having it up at fall for the tncc class it'll be october 29th uh we have room for 16 people now if i get 18 you know i'm gonna squeeze them in but um but that's kind of what we're shooting for. Uh, our classes in the past have been anywhere from 11 to 16. So I'm hoping that'll be enough spaces for folks. Um, so it's online now, October 29th to date. I will close registration on September 20th. So do not wait till the last minute. It also requires some uh, uploading of some information, such as your TNCC card, your uh, instructor status letter recommendation that you either got from your course or you got from a course director. Uh, so you have to be, we ask for a resume just because we want to know about a little bit about you before you come because uh, we don't know everybody in the state obviously uh, so it does ask for some things so don't let folks wait till the last minute okay the reason it's september 20th is casey and i have to order the pre course modules and get those sent out to people 30 days in advance when we've got conference the next week so it's kind of a little tighter timeline right now okay so um so mary if you know you guys kind of just got four people you need to get talking to them um, the other thing that just from the trauma committee perspective, we don't really have a formal trauma committee. I kind of consider the faculty members the trauma uh, committee, and that's kind of who I run things by. We have 21 faculty members in the state. A recent question has come up, and I've gotten it two or three times, um, I would say in the last couple months, Tracy and I have gotten it, is who can monitor TNCC instructor candidates? Um, so this is where we in our state have always kind of looked at our TNCC faculty as the instructor monitor. So once you take a course, you find one of our, our TNCC faculty, they come to a course, they get you checked out. It really hasn't been a big, huge issue, uh, but we're having a lot of activity now in the southern part of the state. Good job. Um, you can all heard people down there. So we got the question, we've got some instructors we want to monitor. We don't really have a TNCC faculty member listed in Indiana in that area. Closest we have is Mary and Miranda. Uh, Mary Randley. Uh, she's she's not faculty, I don't think. Oh, no. She's faculty for Kentucky. For Kentucky. So that is the other part of this. It goes to your home state. So if your faculty, and, and that's just the way the system works. So when I look up, there's a couple of people that are instructors in Kentucky that um, are also faculty members. So that works, but they needed another person because they had three candidates. So I said, you know, we can appoint somebody. Our preference is that we have somebody who's a faculty member check off. But then that got me to thinking, are we antiquated? You know, do we need to do something different? So I put a uh, post on the um, 
So I put a post on there yesterday to the chapter leaders and to the TNCC course coordinators. Because my question is, is, is how are other states doing it? Because I think we've been very progressive in trying to be inclusive, especially of our newer, younger members. Um, and let's face it, the, the 21 of us on the faculty are all like 15 year nurses or 30 year nurses, okay? So we need to start looking at, you know, how we're gonna perpetuate this. So I'm open to ideas. I would like to have, I'll be honest, I'd like to have some objective criteria because when you start saying, oh, you can do it, but you can't do it, you kind of gotta have a reason why you're doing that. We've gotten into that situation in our past and it's caused some hard feelings. And that's why we came up with just letting the faculty do it because we wanted to eliminate that. But I do think it's time we start looking at it and um, I'll have more information for you. I'm anxious to hear your ideas. And also, that being said, many of our faculty uh, folks, the 21 of them, haven't taught a, an instructor course recently. Um, some of them, it's been several years. So if people are interested in coming to Muncie with Tracy and I, we'll try to find a, a place for you. And I'm going to send them an email and just kind of extend that, uh, that invitation if folks want to come. Before you sit down. Go ahead. No, I just want to tie it on that the pediatric EMTC um, instructor course is set for December 8th. I'll post that on that on the So the course you sits down, I should have mentioned this previously, but she received a phone call about a week ago yeah. that she was awarded the Pamela Simpson Kid doctoral scholarship in the amount of $10,000. Wow. <laughs>